What's up everyone? We're going to talk about regular expressions today. And chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably know when to use a regular expression and you're just trying to figure out how to do it. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, a regular expression is used to parse information out of a string, out of some text. So let's say you have an HTML page and, and you go and you scrape the HTML off a web page and you want to pull some information from that you could use a regular expression to parse out that HTML. Um, alternatively, uh, you could say like uh, if you had some kind of bio section or something on a website where you want someone to tell you about themselves and you want to be able to pull out some information from that bio, let's say you want to pull out how old they are, you could use a, reg a regular expression to do that. So let's work towards that goal right now. First off, a range of numbers is represented in a regular expression by square bracket and then 0, 2, 9, close square bracket. If I only wanted the numbers like 1, 2, and 3, I could do the same thing just with 1 to 3 on the inside. But because we're looking at age, we can use any number, so we're going to use this one. So let's toss that into our regex tester right now. We're going to toss in 0, 2, Nine. And right now I don't have any input, so naturally it's not matching anything. Um, by the way, Regex Storm is a really great tester. I'm not sponsored, of course, or anything like that, but if you're going to use a tester, this one's pretty good. I like it. It does what it needs to do. Um, so let's say our sentence is, hello, I am education about stuff. I am 25 years old. So if someone wrote this into a bio section, a biography section on a website, and you want to pull out how old they are, you could use a regular expression to do it. So already you can see a match. We're matching two and we're matching five because both of them are numbers. But the thing is, is that both matches are separate. It's matching two and then it's matching five. So if we want to match two and five together, what we can do is we can say, um, okay, how many times do we want a number to be able to be repeated before we match it? Because it's an age, someone could be like, five years old, someone could be 47 years old, someone could be 107 years old. So we're probably only going to go up to three digits. Now you could repeat this three times, but then you're not going to get a match unless you put in another digit, right? So we end up with a couple of problems, and this is where we need to put in a frequency specifier. So you can put that in between curly brackets. Because we want one to three digits, we can say one to three, and now we should match everything just oops, fine. Oops, that should be a comma. There we go. So it matches 255 years old, but I'm not 255 years old. I'm 25 years old, so that matches. Now the thing is, is that this will match any number with one to three digits. So if I say I have 67 cats. Well, it's going to match the 67 too. I don't want that. I don't want to know how many cats I have. I want to know how old, how old I am. So what we can do next is we can match for a white space, right? Because when someone's typing in how old they are, if they're typing in I'm 25 years old, chances are it's going to be 25 space years space old. You have to look at things very literally like that. So we're going to look for a space. But if they're making spelling mistakes, that could be a problem. Already we're seeing that we're matching the white space after the 25. Now, if someone decided to type this in, well, I'm not matching anything relevant anymore. Um, so we want to account for that. The way that we do that is with another frequency specifier. So you could say, OK, well, I have, you could have zero spaces, or you could have one space. And now it's going to match 25 again. The thing is, is that that's kind of long. We don't like that. We're lazy. So when it comes to either having something or not having something, zero frequency or one frequency, you can just put in a question mark. So there's a couple of little specifiers like this that we can use, and I'll go through each one right now. So the question mark, of course, means that something is optional. It means that whatever comes before the question mark is optional. So in our case, because we have the white space escape character, this represents all white space, and we want to be optional, this looks behind, looks at the previous token, and it says, OK, this is optional. It can either be there or it won't be. So optional means 0 or 1 times. This won't match for two spaces, for instance. 
It will only match for 0 or 1 spaces. Next one up is the plus. If we use the plus, this would mean 1 to infinity. We can have, at the very least, one occurrence of the previous token, or as many as we want. Um, so 1 or more. The last one here, of the main ones at least, this is 0 or more. So what the star is, is essentially you can either have it or you can have as many of it as you want. Um, we're going to look at those in a little bit with our next example. But first, we want to continue matching for 25 years old so we don't match with our cats. So I'm going to put a space there. We're still matching. That's great. We're going to group up the word years. We're looking at, at, we're looking at individual characters here. So we want to group up Y-E-A-R-S into one word. We want to group it all together. So what we can do is we can put in years. And what these brackets do is it looks at whatever is inside here, and it'll treat it as a single token. So now I have all of these characters, which are naturally tokens themselves, and I'm grouping them together into one token. So that means that I can say, I can put like a question mark there. I could, I can, I can change it however I want. Because this is mandatory, because we want to have the word years here, I'm not going to put a question mark after. I'm not going to put in a plus, a star, nothing. We have one, and that's it. Now we're going to match white space again, but what happens if someone make a, makes a spelling mistake, doesn't put in a space, we're going to make that optional. And then we're going to group in the word old. So this is our regular expression. We can pull out 25 years old from this. Now alternatively, you can mess around with this. If you want to, if you want to match with uh, the cats, for instance, you can just put in the word cats. It'll match 67 cats. So the next step here is in your software, you would have a string that represents the match. It would be this. It'd be, be literally 67 cats. The cats part's not really relevant, so you'd use further programming to take the cats out, and then boom, you have 67, which is what you want. This next input string represents some HTML. This is a real world use case. You might have a whole bunch of HTML, and you might want to parse information out of it in, uh, in some software that you make. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to parse out whatever the link text is. Um, so we have to look at a couple of things. First thing, what is what does this text always, always, always start with? What, what starts at the beginning of this text and what does it end with always in a link tag? So we already know that a link tag will always, always, always end with a closing tag. So that's great. We can look for that. Here, we want to know where to start our search, where to start our match. So at the end of the opening portion of a link tag, we'll always have a quotation mark, and then we'll have that little close tag, little triangle looking thing. So that's great. We're going to copy and paste that, and then copy and paste the end here. Of course, we want to group these up, right? Terrific. So these are mandatory, so we're not going to add any question marks or anything like that. Now comes the tricky part. We can have numbers in a link. We can have letters. They can be uppercase. They can be lowercase. I've checked off ignore case here. So we're going to turn that off for now. And we're going to add in some more ranges. So remember the last example, we did 0 to 9. We're going to do that again. But now we can do it with letters, too. So we're going to do lowercase letters, a to z, uppercase letters, a to z. That's terrific. It's still not matching because it need, it's only matching for one character right now. So if I take out all of the characters here except for one, it matches. So we want to use some of our question mark, plus sign, um, star, all of those. We want, to, we want to use one of them. And the one I'm thinking about is the star. OK, so why is this not matching? forgetting about the white space again right there's spaces in there so you have to look at the strings you're parsing very literally because the computer is not going to give you any concessions it's not going to go easy on you so we put in a, a backslash s there and boom we have the text that we want and this will match for anything if we want to do like link one two three something like that it'll match that this this is what's great about regular expressions is that you don't necessarily have to know what's in there and as you can see from this match it can even be blank it can be empty so why don't we take a look at a C-sharp example of this. OK, so here we are in Visual Studio. This is my little program. I'm just going to run it first. So the match is linked to Google. Perfect. 
So the way this works is we import the system.text.regular expressions. We establish an input string, which is just our HTML. Um, here, of course, you have your escape characters um, for, for the quotation marks. Um, there's some messed up highlighting here. Uh, so don't mind that. That's just a C sharp thing. Um, here, I like to make um, pattern strings literal with, um, with the at sign in front because then you can put double quotation marks instead of a backslash quotation mark. It makes these regular expressions a little bit easier to read. So this is our pattern string. It's the exact same thing that we had in the regex tester. And then we can call regex.match with our input string, our pattern string, and we check the value. Um, here, this is what I was talking about. So if you looked at our match in the tester, if I do link to Google here again, right? It matches with this and it matches with this. You want to remove those, they're not relevant. So in C sharp, easy way to do it, just replace that first one with empty string and then replace the close tag with empty string. And then we just console that right line, our match, and boom, there you go. So if we look at that again, it matches link to Google. All right, so that just about concludes the regular expressions video. Um, I mean, I know that there's probably better ways to write these regular expressions, but this is a really, really, really good place to, to start learning these or to even brush up on them if you already knew them before, but you just forgot about them. So I hope that was helpful to someone. Um, don't forget to, to give the video a thumbs up and, and subscribe. I really appreciate it when that happens. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.